Well, good day and welcome back to the A to Z of clarinet. My name is Philip, and we have reached N. N. Can you believe it? No, I can't. But anyway, we're here, and N is for notes, note bashing, note learning. No way, that's too hard for me. I can't do that. Nailing it. That's mu a much better title. Nailing it. Nailed it. If you've been watching along for the last few months, thank you so much for your patience over the uh, holiday break. I had a really good break. I did nothing. I actually played a lot of Zelda. It's been pretty good. But I'm back. I'm back to work, back on deck, and looking forward to the next few letters of the alphabet. We've got some really curly ones coming up. Q. So like I say, today is about N and it is about note bashing or note learning or nailing that passage. Now, if you're anything like me, you can probably get through the majority of a piece of music without struggling too much. But then there's that one little bit, that one technical run that really is an onion in the ointment. So we have this really great feeling about playing the whole piece, but then when we get to that particular line, either we slow down or we never quite nail it. Well, if that sounds like you, then today's video is for you. I've got three of my my favorite techniques for really nailing those technical passages, plus a little bonus at the end. And just like in the last few videos, if you're interested, down below in the description, there's a link to a PDF of the exercises that I go through today. And while you're clicking in the description, give us a like and subscribe. It really helps this channel grow and I'm having a wonderful time making all these videos for you. So let's do it. Let's do some note bashing. Okay, so before we go too deep into these helpful techniques, I'm just going to assume that you're doing everything right, first and foremost. That is, we're, we're practicing nice and slow. We're practicing with a metronome. We have all of our correct fingerings written in. We know what we're doing. That's our starting point. Let's go in further. The first exercise I want to talk about, I like to call beat to beat. Now, all three of these exercises were given to me by my wonderful teacher, David Krakauer, and he got these techniques directly from the one and only Leon Rushinov. So hopefully this is pretty good and useful advice for you. We're going to use the Ool study number three, four, four, three, four, three, four as an example. Now, if you've played this one, you'll probably know that by and large, it's pretty uh, approachable. It's not that difficult. But then there's a couple of moments which are a bit hairy. And we'll take a look at one of those first hairy moments. Now, why do we use beat to beat? Well, technical stuff, technically tricky stuff is generally okay in short bursts. We can figure out a way around it, but it's when it goes on for several beats, maybe a couple of bars, maybe even, you know, upwards of four bars, we start to get a little bit flustered and we find it difficult to maintain control over a longer period of time. Beat to beat helps us with that very problem. So taking a look at this passage right here, it's not that tricky and each individual beat is you know, quite approachable. But when we put it all together and then what comes next, which if you know it, you'll know it's an E major arpeggio, it can really, it can get under our skin a bit. So beat to beat, we keep that momentum, but we just give ourselves a moment to pause on each beat. So playing it as written would sound like this. For beat to beat, we'll do this. Now you'll notice that we're moving from one beat to the next beat. We're not practicing the beats in isolation from each other. We're practicing that momentum while keeping that moment of respite, that moment to pause and get our heads together. You'll probably find that you can actually do this pretty much up to tempo. Like I say, each individual beat, not that tricky. All in a row, that's where it gets difficult. You can make some variations here. Once you're starting to feel comfortable and you want to work on that momentum a bit more than you want to work on the individual technical aspects, you can play more beats before each pause. Likewise, if you're feeling comfortable, you can put more pauses in. It's a really versatile exercise. It's really helpful. And the most important thing is it keeps that momentum, keeps us moving through the beats, not just playing the beats in isolation. So the next exercise we're going to talk about is called adenote. Now, I think Rushinov had a different word for this. I think he called this one pivoting. Um, I might be wrong, uh, but yeah, someone, if you want to go check that out, that would be great. A lot of you will be familiar with the wonderful exercise that we learnt in middle school band or in choir, 
one one two one one two three two one one two three four three two one this is a similar kind of exercise the difference between add a note and the middle school band exercise is the middle school band version uh, always puts the first note of the pattern on a beat this one add a note we don't have that relationship so looking at the second two beats of the all exercise uh, we're talking about if we give each of those notes a number hopefully there's some uh, screen trickery going on beneath me here. If we give each of those notes a number, the pattern we're going to play is one, two, back to one, two, three, two, one, two, three, four, three, two, one. Now, instead of repeating that bottom note, that one note, we're just going to keep moving and we're going to bounce off that note. <laughs> Now, as long as we're moving in the same direction, either upwards or, or downwards, it's pretty smooth sailing. But if we get to somewhere like here, where we change direction, things start to get a little bit tricky. We really have to think about where we're placing those notes and which note comes before and which note comes next. We have to think so much about it that the technical aspects of what note we're playing they take a back seat. So we really need to have absorbed all of those fingering choices in order to get this exercise out. So it's a slightly more complex exercise because we have to um, internalize the technical nature of what we're playing a little bit more. Again, you can vary this. Once you get those uh, couple of bars or those beats or whatever, try reversing it, practice it backwards. Practice it upside down if you want to. Throw a bit of chaos into your practice session and really make it hard for yourself so that when it's easier, it's much easier. Smart. Smart. PhD. Okay, and finally, my favorite of these exercises with the most abstract name. I've completely forgotten what, uh, what Rushenov calls this one. I can't even remember what David called this exercise. Um, but I love calling it ironing because that image has been uh, pressed into my mind. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. I've been spending a lot of time with my kids. The dad jokes are flowing thick and fast. So, ironing. I actually enjoy ironing shirts. My dad taught me how to iron shirts when I was about 14 years old, and I've been doing it pretty much every week since then. In fact, I married a woman who hates ironing, and we even put it in our vows that I would do all of the ironing in the relationship. Strange thing to enjoy doing, but there we are. Everyone's got to have a hobby, right? So what do you do when you're ironing a shirt and you find a crease? You don't just w turn up the heat, shove your iron on it and hope for the best. Now, what's the equivalent to that in ironing out a technical passage? Just play it faster. Just play it from beginning to end and hope that it works out fine. No, what you do with an iron is take the tip, put the tip in the crease and then slowly work your way outwards from that crease. That is going to smooth the crease from the inside out. That's exactly what this exercise does. So in this passage from the Ool study, the most difficult part for me, the crease for me, is between the B natural and the D sharp. You probably find a different part of this difficult, but I've never been particularly happy using the left hand B, right hand D sharp. I don't have a D sharp key here, unfortunately. I've just never felt comfortable with that relationship. So if I'm working on this passage, I'm going to make sure that that relationship is right. That is the crease I'm going to put the tip of the iron into. Now, with add a note, we removed the relationship to the B. Beat. In ironing, we're going to maintain the relationship of the notes and the intervals to the beat. So let's do this. We're going to concentrate just on the crease. We're going to put the metronome on and we're going to play in context just the crease. Now, once we're comfortable with that, and it shouldn't take long, we're going to move the iron outward from the crease and play one note either side of that crease. Again, maintain the rhythmic context. Then we add another note. And we work our way outwards until we're playing the whole phrase. Then 
the thing I love about this exercise is that while keeping it interesting and using the other side of your brain, you still practice that particular interval, that crease, more than any other interval in the phrase. So you're repeating it, but you're also changing it up each time you repeat it. It's easy, it's straightforward, it's systematic. I love it. Like I say, I'm a simple guy. Now finally, here's a bonus hint for you, and this is a really easy one. It's not always the case that we have three or four beats worth of really tricky stuff. Sometimes it's just one interval. Sometimes it's just one crease in the music. When it's just that, when we just have one gremlin in a phrase, take the advice of my friend and former teacher, Jackie LeClaire, an insanely good oboist and teacher. All you do is put a tenuto mark over the note that's causing you the problem. 99 times out of 100, our technical problems are caused by rushing. So just extending that note ever so slightly, just feel that feeling of holding on to the note is gonna give us that time to sort of ground ourselves and be able to move on. Try it, you might be amazed at how simple and satisfying doing that exercise is. So there we have it, there we have my three favorite exercises to really nail that passage. If you're interested, down in the description, there's a link to a free PDF of that exercise with everything that we've talked about today. You'll be prompted to sign up to my mailing list, but I'm not gonna spam you. I will tell you, I'll be sending some emails out shortly because I have a favor to ask of you and some questions to ask you guys for an upcoming video. Thanks again for watching today and thank you for your patience over the holiday break. Um, I was intending to take one week off and I think it's been more like a month, um, but thanks for sticking with me. Stay tuned for next week, we will get to O, which is actually a really interesting topic and I think we're at the right time of year for this topic as well. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much to everyone who's reached out, sent me emails, left comments, liked and subscribed. I love it, it's wonderful. I really appreciate the engagement. I'm having so much fun making these videos and I can't wait to keep on doing it. See you next week, take care, I'll see you soon.